lads, this is Mr. Boss three, Mr. Boss three nine zero. Oh my bad. Um, today I'm bringing you another episode of Napoleon Total War. Um, got something special for you. Kind of a reenactment of the Battle of Austerlitz, I believe. I'm gonna be showing you a replay, so I don't have to manage and get cinematic shots at the same time. That was hectic all the times that I did that. Yeah. Uh, this was, the replay I'm going to show you was a, a battle between people from my regiment, the 21st Regiment of Foot, and Hold Fast. Um, uh, I've been holding it back for like four months now, I think, so, uh, yeah, we'll get into it. Also, sorry I haven't been posting much videos or anything lately. I've been busy and whatnot, but here, let's, which one is it, which one is it? Do, 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 do. I think it's this one. I believe so. What we will see. Yeah, it's this one. Okay. So, yeah. The Battle of Austerlitz. Um, I am with, uh, as you can see, Sauerkraut and Thrawn. And I'm going up against uh, the Colonel Franklin, Claymore, and Sergeant Major Vito. Um, uh, this map... It's very advantageous to us because we have this huge mountain in the middle, like huge. You'll, you'll, you'll see when you load in how just massive this map is. Um, and basically we all went Russian even though there were some Austrians in the battle, but we all went Russian and the, um, they all, the attackers all went French. So I believe Claymore is positioned himself on the left and someone, I forget, uh, Thrawn is, no, Thrawn's on the left, Claymore's in the middle, and I am on the right. All I really know for sure is that I am on the right. And if you just look at the topography here, you can see that they're gonna have a really hard time taking our position. Just look at the straight climb up. This, I guess technically it's not a mountain, but like this hill. Just, you have to go all the way up. The only weak point we have is this forest on the left, which is where they engage first. Um, even though we're red on the minimap, this is my team. That's why we're spectating these guys, so yeah, don't get confused by that. So I am over here on this right flank on this kind of section of the hill, and this is like the huge mountain. Oh my, in the real battle, they had like 20 pounder unicorns here. They didn't allow us to have any unicorns because, well, they're broken in vanilla. So, um, <laughs> uh, so basically we only had like 12 pounders and 6 pounders and up here and whatnot, but if we had 20 pounder unicorns or even 10 pounder unicorns, I'm sure we could have got just buckets of kills. They needed buckets to catch lead. Gettysburg reference right there, but, um, yeah. So this is the battle. You see, I'm placing, still not done placing my troops. We'll fast forward through the deployment part of the battle. <clears throat> Look at my perfect Polusk Grandiers. My bad if I'm pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> so the French are going to start off kind of along this river thing here. Oh yeah, and before the battle starts, I, I want to show you this really cool. There's like an island here in the middle of this uh, river, and look at this. This is super cool. You can see here that there's like, look, frozen dead Frenchmen. And then the, and this dead horse and everything, and like guns and stuff. I thought that's really cool. Like they have dead mutilated bodies. Here, let me zoom in here. See that? I thought that was pretty cool. So I'm going to be going up on my flank against Franklin over here in the um, right flank. Oh, about starting. Um, in the center, I believe it was... Uh, crap, I totally forget. Uh, no, no, wait. Yeah, center, I believe it's... I don't know. And Vito is on this flank with his men over here. So, um, for now, I'm going to keep an eye on my flank over here. And as you can see, all my troops are hidden. Besides for my cannons that are firing, all these guys are ducked down and hidden. Which, like, so... From Franklin's perspective, he only sees these two cannons, and he thinks we completely abandoned here. So he's gonna move up here. Let me cinematic zoom on his approach. 
He's gonna move up slowly and sort of cautiously because he doesn't know what's ahead of him. Um, you'll see. Yep, there's old guard in the back over there. Um, yeah, so the battle's soon to be underway. Um, now what they do and I don't do, which I'm glad I didn't do this, they move down the hill. Uh, my teammates. Uh, they move down the hill, so, but the enemy, so the thing about that is, yeah, you have a better position everything, your already has more room to function or whatever, uh, but the only thing is, uh, there's less slope for you to shoot down on the enemy from. So, like, with me, I'm trying to get as much slope as possible over here, leaving the cannons at the very top, along with my reserve grenadiers, then my lines, and then my, um, skirmishers. But later, I'll move my skirmishers down a little bit, because I'm getting tired of sitting on this goddamn hill. And, um, go over this flank. Now, you can see Vito's taking very aggressive action on the left, on our weak spot. Because, you can see here, we have the cover of the trees, but we do not have the high ground. Um... So he's going to try to utilize that to his advantage and try to break around the left and then they'll fuel his advance, kind of. His little farm set up over there. So he is going to, I think it's either Sauerkraut or Thrawn, or I, I can't keep track of people here since I can't see their names. Um, but yeah, so they're going to try to move troops to the left flank and make sure he does not do that. And then whoever is in the middle, I know Franklin's on the right, Vito's on the left, I do not know who's in the middle. But um, whoever's in the middle is just basically going to stay at the foot of this giant ass hill for the, whole, for the remainder of the game. But the, the the advantage that the French have, you can just you can see right there, they have the howitzers and we don't. So yeah, all the smoke from them. They can do devastating things once they come in contact with uh, the line infantry, and even with the skirmishers, they do bad things. And the solid shot, wrecking havoc. Oh, took down that cannon. Nice. I believe one of my cannons has been taken down. A few of my cannons have probably have been taken down over here. And only one so far. This one, yeah. It's perfect. The fallen ground and piece of rubble. So he still doesn't see my troops even though he's been shelling them because he's been aiming at my uh, uh, artillery here. Now, the other YouTuber that does these videos, Pixelated Apollo, he always shows the army comps. That's kind of boring for me. You can just, as I scroll over all my units, you can, like, tell. Like, these are some Samoski lifeguard and lifeguard foot and whatever. Got some cav back here, dragoons and chassiers, and ulans in the very way back. So, really the weak points of the map, as you can see, are the flanks, because on this flank, technically we have the high ground, but you'll see soon that it's not going to really give me a huge advantage over here. And then on the other flank, we don't even have the high ground. But the only th advantageous thing we have is the, the tree cover, and we're soon going to give that up, as you will see. So, shots being fired over here by the French and the Russians. Taking casualties now. They form square over here because, well, French cavs coming in to re, uh, to some support this advance, and then Russian cav trying to guard this position. First Russian volleys taking out some French soldiers and whatnot. Moving more musketeer units over to the flanks. The only thing bad about Russia, like the artillery is great on Russia and everything, but the musketeers have 35 accuracy. They like, they're really inaccurate, like, British Militia is the same accuracy as them, they're, but they have a really good melee bonus, so you want to try to get close and stuff in this battle, but that didn't really help us, because we needed to fire on them with the hill, but this, I was, I was trying to tell this guy, I remember this distinctly, I was trying to tell this guy to use more of the slope on this hill, especially over here and stuff, but it just, like, you don't even need to engage in the forest over here. I mean, you can leave a couple skirmisher units to recover your retreat, but like, move up the hill. So when he advances, he has to go up this, up, up, over the, with these trees and with the, the shrubs and everything, and then you have the high ground fire down on him, but they, I don't think they did that. Oh, we have experimental howitzers, but we do not have unicorns. Yeah, there's the howitzers, not even numbered, whatever. So, reserves on the top of the hill. Yeah, Franklin sent out his cav earlier to scout out. Yeah, he's... he's. 
I, I don't remember exactly the casualty count, but his artillery just kept wrecking it through my lines, even though he couldn't see them. Just look at that. Ugh. Damn. That guy has a mind of his own. I'm at this setting. Shoot him. Oh, yeah, man. Their house is coming down on my men. General's under attack. Well, put a pipe in it. I put it. I don't know. Can't words. <clears throat> oh, looks like there's this. Oh, cab engagement on the left over here. We missed, but still going on. Square is being formed. Looks like with Lancer cavalry, we can do something, and we're pulling back out now. Ulan's Russian Ulan's coming in. Oh, this is gonna be. Oh, are they gonna get the charge? Yep, they got the charge off without forming square. Oh, they didn't get a very good charge, but they got a charge. Although, putting your putting your infantry units in guard mode is really OP. It allows them to, like, go through really combat and everything, and shoot, like, with the free soldiers at the same time. So now they're going to abandon this forest flank, the French are over here, and they're gonna c concentrate on the massive hill. And they're gonna form up close like four legs and whatnot. Oh, look at the experimental hazards coming in on these French troops. Oh, wow. Look at the casualties. That's damn horrific. You can just see a line that got slaughtered back here. And over here as well. These were Young Guard, I believe. Yeah, Young Guard. More Russian Cav and Russian infantry over here just trying to get back to the, where the fight is. And then on my flank, he's sending up the skirms first, and he met my Jaegers. And now his artillery can concentrate on my Jaegers, and my infantry is now visible. Besides from these guys, these guys, well, uh, some of them are. My left unit does not look like it, but my all my units on the right besides, okay. Only these two and the Jaegers. Ah, uh, yeah. So... He's gonna be moving up these guys on the right flank. He moved back his other skirm unit because they took like heavy casualties, about 11 people dead. And I'm gonna move my skirm unit over here to cover his advance to the right. So he's gonna send his troops on the very right first because he doesn't. I don't have much of a high ground advantage over here. It's not as devastatingly steep as over here in the middle. So Franklin. Vito and the middle guy are all going to be concentrating on whoever's here in the middle, so we need to hold these men, hold the uh, French men trying to get up the silver here. We haven't completely abandoned this flank, but if the French were smart, they would send like five whole infantry units around here, because the Russian line can only be extended so far. Charge the cabin, even if it's into square. Charge the cabin, and if the cabin gets slaughtered into square. Move up the infantry, fire down on the enemy infantry, and just keep going up the hill. That's how they actually did it, but they did not do that. They decided to go for a frontal engagement, and now they're pulling back. And you can just see what was left of their failed offensive. I mean, it's not too devastating of casualties, but it's something you would like to have back. Oh! That was damn close to getting some really good kills on them, man. It was, it's just the, the experimental housers in this game are kind of broken when used rightly, but the just regular housers are also broken, especially the new cards. Up. Oh, so on all flanks now, they're moving up. Get some cinematic close up shots here. The old guard advancing up the hill. Now, I think, I don't know who said this, but one of my friends said that, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, so it's slow motion. Um, one of my friends said that, uh, units only fire straight, so like hill combat like this is super, like, broken because these people only fire at these people and these people fire in the dirt. That's not true. You can see all these bullets heading up there right now. So, and you can see, you don't, you don't see actually where they aim their guns, but you can see where the, the fire kind of, like, from the guns points out. It's really hard to explain, but you guys can see that they're, they're taking casualties. This isn't broken or anything. I just wanted to put that knowledge out there. Oh, old guard getting flung back. Oh, wow. 
taking heavy casualties. The Old Guard is by far my favorite unit in this game, and in definitely in NTW uh, 3, that, that mod, and Vanilla, probably France is my favorite country, even though Britain has the advantage and everything. So here, we can see he's on my flank now, they're beginning their advance with artillery cover and all that good stuff. Until there's firing, I think I'm gonna try to focus on there's action. Ooh, that volley from these musketeers. We try to... Uh, I think I did at least. Yeah, I put chevrons on all of my men, so musket... Uh, with one chevron, you get two plus accuracy, so instead of having 35, they have 37. Which does something. It doesn't do anything great, but it does something. 35. <laughs> I was not only friendly firing with my own cannons, but with enemy cannons as well. Those are, I don't know if those are mine, if those are enemy, but yeah. He has some men coming to my right flank. And we can see here in the center, these French troops. I don't know why, just honestly, I will not even put any French in this valley or I'm even trying to assault this hill. This is a freaking a death trap right here for the French, but they did this, so it's on them. If that was a little, it exploded a little bit down in the air, that would have taken them out. Here we have the, what's left of the French cavalry. Oh, you can see them chopped up, um, forming up on the right flank. And the Russians now have the flank advantage, and they're moving up. The defenders are moving up on the attackers. That's, oh my god, this is, this pissed me off. Like, look how thick these lines are. Only the front line fires. You should always have your your lines in either two or three. And three is kind of pushing it personally. So just this this kind of pissed me off because you're getting the least effectiveness and most casualties. It's just whatever. They're they're reforming again to the flank. And the Russians have the event the clear advantage now, not only by manpower well actually They've taken casualties too, but they, they still have the hill. It's not like they're abandoning the hill or anything. Oh, the volleys being exchanged by both sides. You see the young guard falling. Hold the line, man. Hold. Hold the France. Hold for the baguette. <laughs> and oh, more old, I mean, young guard. You can see all the bodies. Small cap charge on this one. Can he form square? No. He doesn't. Oh wow, they might actually break this unit. Oh my god. That's so lucky by the French. A unit of like 15 Polish guard lancers breaks a uh, unit of, I think before the charge and getting fired upon, they were like 50 or 60. They could have formed square, but he can't pay attention everywhere at once. Oh, you can see. Now, it's getting close on my flank. It's about to be engagement time. And these guys getting gang banged from over here and over here. So it's going to be a little bit hard on this flank. The right was where the stuff where he just held on and kept trying to choke me out. But as you can see, I survived, as well as you will see. Try not to spoil the battle here. Vault to gears, covering for the line of infantry up here. You can see the muskets pointing at the ground, but the like the, the the fire and smoke kind of points at like where the targets are, and you can see the bullets are coming up there. Look at this, 72 men. How depleted like my guys are, not only by friendly artillery fire, but enemy and stray bullets and everything. It's just my guys get down to like half strength before they actually really fire a shot. So you see more howitzer fire coming in on my flank. And now he's counterattacking on the French push on the right, because this this is where France has a chance with their really bad strategy. Either on my right flank or the center's right flank. So really just center kind of right. And so now he's trying to plug this gap where France is trying to going to exploit this. Even though they still have all this men a freaking a sizable force down here. Just formed up and like this is stupid. This is just just look at this. You need to micro, even if it means the most micromanagement ever, you just need to micromanage your guys. I think, yeah, Russia should either advance a little bit more or just stay there. That was a good decision by them. Stay on the defensive. Even though they have the howitzers and artillery, just stay on the defensive. You can see all the French casualties. Really, they made a huge mistake just trying to frontal us all on this hill, and now they're 
taking men and kind of doing this weird tactic. And honestly, if the Russians counterattacked, they could have taken like these three units, pushed down, maybe concentrated one of them on this old guard over here, and then the other two right down on here. They could have pushed them back. All right, now he's gonna get in the melee that the Russians have the bonus on, charging downhill and everything. You can see, and with Moscow Musketeers, that he's gonna he's gonna take out this old guard. Oh, actually, maybe not. Well, it's just because the old guard gives a automatic morale disadvantage to the enemy troops. But charging downhill with Russian Moscow Musketeers should win basically against any unit. But we will see. Oh, oh, morale though. Now the Ru oh the French are advancing. Can the Russians withstand this? You see, if France France did so many things wrong, they could have won this battle. They could have no doubt won this battle over here just by taking all of these men over here and just like maybe putting a couple over here on the forest, but like taking 80% of their forces and just shoving them up this massive hole right here. That sounded weird, but you, you get the you get the idea. They could have won, but. They didn't do that, and you can see now on my flank, things are starting to get hairy here. Line infantry is starting to take some shots. Fire onto them, boys! I was gonna make this video an ACW video, because 2.0 came out, and the game just got so much better, but for some reason my replays won't work, and especially in that mod, micromanagement's a huge thing, so, you know, I'm just gonna try to focus on vanilla, and then, and, um... And DW3 and stuff. Maybe even some Zulu, although Zulu's kind of glitchy and not really a good mod, but we'll see. It's pretty old. So. Reforms and I get ready. Volley on to them. What are you doing, imbeciles? What are these guys doing? Fire back. Okay, there we go. Finally. So you can see they're making their advance on the right and stuff. I'm just trying to keep my line straight. No gaps. Because what happened on Russia's side over here, they created a gap. And then it just kind of disintegrated from there on. And you can see now canister being fired down onto the Frenchman. Oh, imagine if a canister round hit this unit right here. I want to see if that will happen. See if this can is... Where is this can? Oh! It might. Oh, I think it's aimed at these guys, but we'll see what this does. Zoom, cinematic zoom on these guys. See what's gonna happen. Oh, they're reloading. Never mind. It takes ages for artillery to reload too. Now he's slowly pushing back the French. They had a, oh, yeah, only one more unit exploiting that possible winning gap. You can see the what the French. No, actually, this is mostly Russian casualties over here. But yeah, you can see. All the, just the casualties of this battle and the pure death on the ground. The Jaeger is back here. Russian art, I mean Russian infantry and just the French. You can see the story behind their advance up the with the old guard. It's like re the reverse of Waterloo. Like first they send in the old guard, then they send in the young guard, and then you know the infantry and all that goodness, goodness, good stuff. So um, here we have the skirmishers doing their skirmishing thing. And just look at how just messed up these guys are. Out of formation, casualties shaken, they're routing now, and just... Now I have a gap in Franklin's line, but he's gonna kind of plug it, sort of. He's gonna separate his forces. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say he's gonna separate his forces. Himself. Although, when we play this game, is still kind of new. We got the game in, I think, either September or October or something, but yeah. Now, with his... Old, no, I don't think I don't think they have old. No, just with the fusiliers of the line, he slow marches up. Advance, men in France, and putting the volunteers in the front. Now I have the cuirassiers on this flank over here. I'm going to use them to my advantage. This is like Russia's best cav, basically. Although for charging, I should have used the um, yeah, still the Ulans back there. I already used the dragoons. I charged. That was why they were so messed up over here. You can see that story within the dead bodies. And I'm gonna try to keep an eye on my flank because I know some interesting sh Oh, you can, you can, because this unit's so depleted and everything, he tries to charge it up the hill and see if these men can make it. Just, no, just not even. Retreating with 15 men and gonna get down there with less than 10. Now I have the problem of my men have been firing for so long, haven't, and usually by this time they're all in melee or whatever, because 
Honestly, games get really uh, hectic like that. Um, so the, by this time they are nearly, but they're not. So my men are now running out of ammunition and everything. And I don't know why. Oh, no, 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 I remember why. You can see here, sort of, um, my my Jaegers have, can fire over my line of infantry head, heads. My line of infantry's heads. <laughs> oh, God, I can't wait. Um, and then, you know, provide suppressing fire and whatnot. There's, oh. Oh crap, I totally missed this. Huge. I charged my grenadiers and my cavalry. They charged their cavalry and kept their old guard over there, so we'll see what's going on. I'm at a disadvantage here because he has more cav and better infantry than me, but I think. Oh no, I have. I charge also with some. Yeah, these guys are pretty elite, so if they get in this combat over here, if they don't get fired upon by these old guard, they can do some damage. So they're sort of getting in. Kind of crab walk in there. I just don't want the we're gonna be falling out of them. Oh, never mind. Oh, you just watch the numbers drop. Look at all the dead Frenchmen here that charge. Oh wow. Just the Frenchmen being taken out. Yep, and now they're he he moves his old guard out of the engagement and he leaves his cab to the mercy of my cursiers and elite infantry too. This is I mean, I don't know why you would move to volley okay no no this this is sort of smart but it just it didn't work out so well i guess because my guys won the melee on the right flank is at disadvantage in the center now he's on disadvantage because he just lost too many men look at the dead frenchies look at all the dead fusiliers and over here i kind of oh no he moved his cossack cavalry to kind of distract him just you can see all the dead frenchmen on the ground and just this, this, in, in, in the long run, I guess this was, um, oh, wow, this, now, now my men are getting slaughtered, but you can just see that I won the engagement here, and that was the important thing, now I'm trying to get as much men back as I can without getting, oh, absolutely messed up by artillery and infantry and just pure hell on earth on this retreat, like Napoleon from Russia, in this dastardly weather, too. Fifty men now, fifty... A hundred. Uh, this unit's still pretty juicy, but you, juicy. <laughs> you want, but you, you can just see that my guys in the center here are just bleeded down to the bone. So are his Frenchmen, though, trying to get up the steep hill. And he's moving backwards again, trying to exploit my right flank over here. That's sort of weak, but now I'm moving my Ulans over here. Okay, so this where's his depleted old guard? Did he withdraw them? Can't. Well, anyways, what he has left, I, since I have my Ulans on this flank, it's really the Ulans are the, the big thing here. And you can see them too. Ulans and, and, and what I have left of that charge over here. It's, it's, let's, and, and freaking Jaegers on the top of this uh, little ledge here. It's pretty hopeless for him on my flank over here. So he's gonna, um, he's gonna be the little pussy that he is in the draw. But, uh, oh, you see just the canister coming down off the hill. The French basically by this time it's pretty hopeless, but they're just they're trying. Trying with with what they have left. The Russians are still holding in the forest on this flank and whatnot. Get my knuckles real quick. So the French uh, the main force it looks like is withdrawing on my flank. That three units I mean that isn't their main force. Their main force is over here, but that's a definitely a good bit of it. If they can if they can get one push on this valley over here, I don't, or either on the valley on the right or on the just, just any of these flanks that are, okay, not in this valley, that's a death trap, my bad, either on my left or on the very right, just they need to, it's, their mentality is all wrong, since their men is on, is on this part of the battlefield, like the center part, they're like, okay, well, we need to engage in the center. You can move them to any part you want. You might take a few casualties to artillery fire, but that's not the end of the world. Anyways, enough of me bitching on. We'll uh, watch this battle here. Fusiliers holding their ground on this massive ledge. I think I moved my Ulans up and then moved them back. And then here, since he's not going to move his men, I decided to move up my... Or Sardi over here. There we go, now they're remembering. So, my unit of 25 grenadiers now firing on the enemy. Why am I 
One of my oh, I think my Jaegers are out of ammo. I didn't realize. I'm gonna. I, they're either gonna be charged by the old guard, or the, I'm gonna charge them with the old guard. I think eventually I'm gonna realize that these guys are out of ammo. Just don't know when. And now Franklin gathered his forces for one last push on my very right, which is my weakest point, but it's still a strong point. Charged at the last second over here. My Jaegers aren't gonna do anything against the old guard in melee, but hopefully if these guys have ammo, they can do something against the old guard with their shots. Ooh, volley to my Jaegers. So they're gonna move up here. Oh, just look at the, the casualties I suffered and that he suffered. The Jaegers just, they got wiped out. Oh, you can see Jaeger on, uh, uh, what's it called? A Vault Gear action over here. And now they're diverting men to my flank. They want to kind of push on my right over here because they see I'm depleted. But eventually, I'm pretty sure they sent reinforcements over my way. And also, I can hold my own on this hill over here, too. Even though it's not as steep as the other one, I can still hold my own. Cannons over here, like from the infantry. Uh, now the Grenadiers retreating with 14 men. Looking pretty bad on my flag over here. On my side. And the thing is, I need to keep these men over here, even though I should really move them over to this flank. I need to keep. Them. Oh, cap charge, cap charge, cap charge. This is this is when the Russians have the uh, the melee advantage. So if I can get in. Even though I have a slight, not really, but a high ground advantage. I'm gonna charge in now. Crusaders first, then put the Ulans. Even though they form square, I'm going in with infantry, Ulans, Crusaders. I'm going with all this massive blob of Russian. Uh, not only two units, but still. Massive blob of Russian cavalry and infantry. Hopefully, I can break this square. And I just keep them occupied long enough. And now. I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna do something and get another high ground advantage over here. Fall back like this. This is what they should have done on um, this flank originally. Just position themselves over here. But I've done that in a slight, slightly, um, uh, I, uh, slightly smaller scale. There you go. Oh, lost the word smaller for a second. So now he's, he's advancing this infantry up the very tall, long scope in the middle. Uh, slope, slope. I really can't words. And then my infantry is firing on this left flank over here. And really, I'm just pleading for just like one or two infantry units to kind of support me on this flank right here. Because he's already shelling this unit over here. But, um, I did, did something to this infantry over here. I took down that one square, but he still has three, three healthy units over here. And I'm... Currently, I'm managing other things, and oh, uh, these guys will slaughter because I'm managing other things. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to charge them in at some point, but and then, oh yeah, I'm managing these cap, and now, yeah, now I'm charging them in. Um, you can see my Ulans now coming down the hill, chasing after the Frenchmen, and I think this, I'm half thinking this was a mistake. But I, I don't know, because I think I could, I think he could form square, but he just retreated the whole line. And I, and I thought it was because of this Ulan unit over here. And I think I kind of sent that too. It's a death by accident as well. I'm paying attention to my arty, my infantry, and other things too. So really, the, since they're moving all their infantry over here back, I'm pretty sure, I, I remember they had a last stand across the river, this battle's like three and a half months ago, but um, yeah, they're maneuvering men over to this flank. Since I'm kind of pressed for time on this video, I'm gonna fast forward until there's shots being fired. So, as you can see, he's marching his men up here to meet my lifeguard afoot. Gonna engage very soon. Oh, and yeah, now they're firing. Right on! Get your guns loaded! We only have one, two, we only have a few guys firing over here. Oh, I'm gonna wheel my men. Oh, my Ulans did charge in, but not to the de- Oh, now, well, now they're gonna die. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna wheel my men. Oh, yeah, because I have this, um, Musketeer units and Jaegers coming in from the back. More support. There you go. And they're, uh, falling back here down the hill. 
firefight going on. This battle had a bunch of... It didn't really have stages. Well, kind of did, but like there wasn't sectors of the battle. I mean, sort of was. I'm contradicting myself so much right now. But like, it all they all came in at once, which was the only smart thing the French did. But, um... Yeah, we're gonna see the end of this battle now. French taking casualties. Now I have uh, an actual high ground advantage on this flank, and them trying to take that away from me, firing upon me, is not going to work. I'll tell you that for sure. Zooming in over here on these French soldiers, just a smog of the foot of a uh, smoke over here. Soon I'm basically just going to do an all charge because they've retreated down this hill, and they're going to. They are going to the right, okay? They've gained a foothold up on this hill, and they see that this is their best chance, which, I mean, I could sort of disagree with that, but they should still be pushing where they don't have this high ground disadvantage, but whatever. And so now we have, I'm charging in my infantry, letting these guys use this blast of their um, it, um, ammo by firing on these Frenchmen over here. Because all my men here are just almost decimated when it comes to ammo, and men as well, They've, since we have the uh, advantage of charging down the hill and you know, Russian infantry really advantage, and it took down that unit, and now we're taking on this huge, healthy old guard unit, now that's going to be a big, stiff and, um, like, a big, just stiff in my advance over here, so I'm going to move my musketeers up here to fire on those guys soon, and they're retreating out of the melee fight! Charging in for musketeers, and they're just retreating, taking friendly um, artillery fire, and um, they're exhausted too. So if I just keep chasing after these guys and getting calm out with them, even though they're old guard and they're healthy unit too, I think I can take them out. Especially if I move these guys up, and they still have ammo to fire on down on their men. And now I'm getting these guys in combat. Fun. Grab walking. Slowly in the battle. Get some nice melee shots here. This guy's fighting. This guy, they're all fighting over here. Ooh, right there. Oh, that's keep adding down. Oh, carrying over here. These two guys are fighting. Yep, yep. I think he got shot. Good shot. This little guard's on this fighting with this Russian man. Is it here? Ooh, ooh. I love the animation of the melee in this game. It's so nice. Guard are retreating. Can they get out of there without breaking? Oh, and I think they. It's not over yet. Oh, it's definitely not over yet. I have my two units still chasing them down. Can they get out of there without? Because they're, they're wavering. They're wavering. So are my men, though. Oh, and then these guys broke. These guys are losing morale. These guys gained chevrons. So did my guys. But it's going to come down to a wire this fight over here. I have a high ground advantage and the Russian infantry advantage, but he is old guard, so. And they have a chevron too, they just got experience, so. We'll see. It'll carry them away, boys. The friendly fire from friendly musket men. And then more Russian charging coming in. Old guard broke. So now I'm gonna try to reform and charge what they have left down here. So, basically, we're just trying to focus down on putting our cavalry, if we have any left, really, to good use on this uh, artillery over here. And the infantry, what's left of it, is on this flank. I'm basically using my men of just, like, really only guys now. I'm just charging them down the hill into the exhausted front. I mean, my guys are pretty tired, too, but they've been running around the whole crowd. So, let's see. That's what I'm doing. Are these guys retreating? Oh, they're just reforming, I guess. Oh no, those guys are retreating. These guys are holding their ground. And he's reforming. You can just see how just slow they're moving, like fucking sloths. He could double ranks, but no, no. Especially with this. I mean, it's healthy, but it isn't like freaking hugely healthy. Whatever. My men are still going strong on this flank. Taking down these old guard. Should probably recharge them in the melee combat because they're forming up ranks again. But right. anyways, the young guard is taken down. These young guards are now formed the double ranks I talked about earlier. 
I'm sure I do have fire on my guys. Can they get shots off? And... No, they did not. So I'm still going strong with the charge. Even though this guy... This is a decent level to do it. 75 people. Uh, they have like about... I'm gonna say... 60 men on this charge. And they're... They're, they're Russian elites and musketeers and stuff. So, we'll see. Looks like I'm win yeah, winning so far. Because they're Frenchmen are losing slightly. Yeah, winning decisively, winning to slightly, so yeah, looks like I'm gonna take out this unit too. French lead infantry is not elite when it's so tired. These guys are gonna be retreating, so these guys are gonna get more morale damage because their flanks are exposed or whatever. And these, I guess they see these guys retreating or whatnot, and they're, my men are still fighting strong over here. Well, now, now his men are shaking, gonna waver soon. Russian infantry still firing down on this French infantry. Oh, and those guys, these guys are gonna retreat soon. Yep, these guys broke. These guys are broke. These guys are gonna break very soon. In the next 30 seconds, I bet. And now I'm just keeping the charge going. My men are exhausted, but they have the downhill advantage in the Russian infantry, for Christ's sake. So, we're still going downhill. I mean, we're going technically up, but whatever. You, you get the idea. I presume. So, yep, now these guys are routing, and really, there's not much good combat. So we're just going to speed up this battle, and uh, that basically does it. So, let me talk about the future while we're watching these Frenchmen get slaughtered, and probably Russian. Yep, Russians too. Um, so, probably not going to upload a few more videos, because I just have a lot of personal things to do. Um, I'm gonna try to keep these Napoleon Total War things going, and what I really want to try to do is get get my events, um, 21st Regiment of Glorious Foot events, getting taped and whatnot, so we'll get those done. My men are moving over here. We killed one of their generals. I think their only general that's left. And I think I have a few more. Yeah, this is my, I'm pretty sure these are all mine, and this is mine, so I'm Really, I'm just moving up, because he has one already, and I think an infantry is hiding somewhere in here. I'm going to charge. He's charging this Cossack Cav, seeing if we can get up there without completely getting obliterated. And, we're gonna, and he's going to charge his general. And... The general broke. Can we get to the arty? Yep. Killed the now general and break. killed the arty. That is it for the battle. Let's look at the stats real quick. Uh, you can see me, Mr. Boss, I deployed less than both of my teammates, and I killed more than both of my teammates. I'm um, not to brag, but I did pretty good. French didn't get all that many kills. Franklin on my flank did the... No, no, he didn't do the best. Claymore in the center did the best. Uh, Vito deployed the most, and they took the heavy, heavy losses. Let's take a look at the unit statics. Yep, my my men on the right flank, Sevnoski lifeguard, got 246 kills, along with the men to their left, still on the right flank though, the lifeguard foot, another 246 kills, so together they got 500 kills, what is that, like half of my kills, two units, well, just goes to show you, yeah, so Russians are victorious, we have won the battle, and like, I'm pretty sure in real life, I don't even know what, how in real life the French took that. I don't even know if they won for sure. Put that in the comments if you know. I will see you guys later. And, um, yeah. Peace.